Jordan, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I'm Congresswoman Grace Mang, and I appreciate all of you for being here today. Um, in light of the rising cases of COVID uh, throughout New York City, we thought that it would be a little safer and easier for everyone uh, if we did this uh, on Zoom. So thank you for accommodating at the last minute. I'm really honored, as always, to be here with our borough president, Donovan Richards, and his team uh, for being such an amazing champion for our county of Queens and for the tireless work that him and his team do each and every single day to improve our great borough uh, and the lives of the residents who call Queens their home. Uh, we wanted to be here today, especially with all of you, to highlight the recently enacted infrastructure bill in D.C. Uh, and what potential uh, it could bring to our borough of Queens. Uh, about a month ago, on November 15th, I joined President Biden at the White House as he signed this $1.2 trillion Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act into law. This measure is historic and monumental. It is the greatest investment ever in our country's infrastructure. It is bold, it is bipartisan, it will repair and overhaul and modernize our nation's crumbling and aging infrastructure. And it will deliver for New York, providing billions of dollars for our roads, bridges, highways, mass transit, airports, high-speed internet, clean drinking water, clean energy investments, and more. And all this will, in turn, improve safety for our Queens residents, enhance travel and quality of life, creating jobs, including good union jobs, and strengthen our economy. These funds will be a boon for New York over the next several years, but we are here today to make sure that a significant and deserved portion of this money makes its way to Queens, uh, especially our congressional district. Our borough, just like any other area in the Big Apple, requires funding to address the necessities of our local infrastructure, and we need the city and state to ensure that we receive our fair share, and Queens doesn't always get its fair share. We saw during the COVID pandemic and Hurricane Ida where uh, infrastructure, whether it's hospitals to our roads, our catch basins and sewers, uh, led to inequitable uh, and detrimental results for so many of our Queens families. Originally, uh, the borough president and I were going to be uh, at one of the sites that were most impacted by Hurricane Ida. This area included Peck Avenue in Flushing, um, but there were many areas and the borough president and his team have visited and helped so many residents who were impacted, uh, whether it was in Flushing to Forest Hills, to Bayside, to Glendale, to Fresh Meadows. Um, since we couldn't be there today, uh, Borough President and I, sorry, Donovan, this is as fancy as it gets for us in this office. Um, but there was tremendous property damage and loss of life. Um, my congressional district alone lost six people. Um, our sewers and catch basins, like the ones um, in this photo, um, as well as many other communities throughout Queens were at capacity and were not able to handle the rainfall. Uh, another reason why I wanted the borough president to be here was not just as his role as BP, but because he's done significant work, whether through uh, Superstorm Standy, when he was a council member, uh, about catch basins and capacity of water and flooding as well. These were built for an era when 100 year floods actually only occurred every 100 years. And our infrastructure, just like these catch basins around here, must be updated and maintained to reflect the reality that storms like Ida will occur with greater frequency, putting lives at risk. And our Queens neighborhoods, as we know from the last few past storms, are especially vulnerable to infrastructure failures. Um, we have to make sure that when the city and state doles out infrastructure money, that our borough of Queens gets the necessary money to update our, our climate and storm infrastructure. We are also fighting for um, other 
projects that will need funding. Um, and you know whether it's our local roads and bridges, our subway system, our Long Island Railroad stations, they need more maintenance and upgrades to which they're entitled. Uh, and to ensure, for example, at the very least that our train stations are accessible to the elderly, to the disabled, to passengers with ch young children and strollers. We also have to make sure that the lead pipes in our playgrounds and our schools are replaced and fixed to ensure safe drinking water for our kids. And the last study, Queens had one of the highest levels of lead water in our parks. Um, in Congress, I've worked to increase affordable internet access for students, and we've been able to help many of our local schools in Queens get funding so that more of their students can get more affordable access uh, to the internet. And we have to close this digital divide. Even in places like New York City, this is not just a rural problem. This affects about 30% of families here in New York. There are some projects that I'm pushing for, such as rebuilding and reopening the shuttered Elmhurst Long Island Railroad Station, funding for elevators and platform extensions at the LIRR stop in Forest Hills. We've been able to, in my time in office, get elevator access uh, in our LIRR stations in places like Flushing Main Street and Murray Hill. Um, but we are, uh, we won't rest until we have accessibility at all of our subway and LIRR stations. We want to get more electric vehicle charging stations um, and uh, medians and street repairs uh, that need to be made. So I just want to make sure, and again, I want to thank the borough president that we are not leaving Queens out of the uh, equation uh, when this money starts being distributed here in New York City. Um, really look forward to working with Governor Hoko, Majority Leader Schumer, and our incoming mayor, Eric Adams, to make sure that we are bringing money to areas that traditionally have been neglected and underrepresented, and Queens is at the top of that list. So thank you to all of you for joining, and I'd like to turn it over to our great borough president, Donovan Richards. Thank you so much, Congresswoman, and I can't thank you enough for all of the work you and your team uh, continuously does, whether we're doing a press conference or not, the work behind the scenes that you do to ensure uh, that your residents are getting the services and the resources they need is, um, I, I like to say, um, you know, you're one of the best. <laughs> I, I could just say that. Um, and so I wanna thank you and your team for what you continue to do. And I wanna thank you for bringing the bacon home um, <laughs> to New York City. You know, we're talking about $1.2 trillion. And we really have an opportunity, as you alluded to, to ensure that many of the issues we've talked about for decades finally get addressed. And, and you, you sort of go back to the height of this pandemic. And I've talked often about this over the course of the last 18 months or nearly two years. Uh, many people have questioned why Queens was the epicenter of the epicenter. And you look at the inequities that many pockets of our borough have faced, whether it's around healthcare and the lack of access and the lack of beds across the borough and the closure of, of hospitals. Uh, you think about uh, education and how our children were impacted, how there were many pockets of our borough where kids didn't have access to technology and even now we find ourselves replacing technology in the schools um, because many of our children didn't have access at home and, and had to uh, borrow you know, laptops uh, and iPads from their schools. Um, you think about uh, infrastructure and how coming out of Ida and not just Ida, Hurricane Sandy, how many pockets of our borough never had the infrastructure investment put in place even as the borough grew. So you, you look at areas like Jamaica and 183rd Street, you look at places like Roseville, you look at places like Flushing, and you question how were these neighborhoods built without sufficient infrastructure? And I think what you did in DC is gonna help us to finally piece together, not only piece together that puzzle, but to finally get us to address it. And one of the things I also am very appreciative of uh, as we look at the Biden uh, bill and the bill that you passed, it's the, the, the way you guys looked at equity even being centered in the bill was something critical because that ensures 
pockets of Flushing and Forest Hills and Jamaica and Narakaways are looked at from a perspective of where weren't the dollars being put all of these years. Um, so this is a real opportunity, as, as our Congress member said, to really look to the future to make sure that we're just not simply building back, but that we're building back better for the borough. And that means ensuring that, yes, those investments that are central to ensuring that our streets are better. You know, I, I, I go back to my period of being the Environmental Protection Chairman of the City Council. Uh, and I, I like that we're here talking about infrastructure today because oftentimes, you know, it gets centered in the press sometimes, in the media sometimes, and then it disappears. But nothing happens without infrastructure. You can't build housing without infrastructure being put into neighborhoods. As Queens continues to grow and that investment in affordable housing continues to happen, we need to make sure that infrastructure is being centered um, in the conversation as well. And one way to look at this is you look at some of the areas, for instance, where there was investment put in after a long period of time, we fought for areas and communities like Rosedale, where we were able to get about $2 billion put in the city budget to finally address systemic um, flooding that has happened for, for, for decades. And you look at what happened during Ida, these were the communities that didn't flood where we saw that investment. So it shows that if we center and invest in communities like the folks who live on Peck Street, like the folks we saw in East Elmhurst and Corona and Sunnyside and Jamaica, that if those sound investments are made util utilizing uh, this bill and this investment, that we will finally start to address uh, the inequities that we've seen. And many people will ask, well, how do we ensure we're never back here again during a pandemic? That requires us investing in these communities. And so I'm happy to be here to, to play a supporting cast member to uh, Congresswoman Grace Ming. And of course, we will be working hand, to, hand in hand together to ensure that as that money is filtered down through the state and through the city, that the governor and the mayor understand that Queens has to be prioritized. Yes, Queens is the future. Queens has to get the money, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, but that that money is reaching the pockets of the boroughs that, uh, that are historically disinvested in. And that's the way we ensure that we're never back here during a pandemic by making sure that those sound investments and these sound investments are made. Um, I'll end in saying that Queens has a unique story to tell. You know, our diversity is our strength. People are coming to Queens. We are growing tremendously. Uh, you look at the future of Queens and projects like the potential of Sunnyside Yards and um, the growth on the Rockaway Peninsula. And every day I'm at a ribbon cutting in Jamaica now and there's growth in Flushing. Um, you know, we are growing and we need to make sure that even as we grow, that those investments in transportation, education, our roads, our bridges, our transportation networks are also uh, being upkept as well. So thank you, glad to be here. And we'll, we look forward to working with our Congresswoman and Senator Schumer to make sure that he also understands, and I've been pulling his coattails already to ensure that that money uh, reaches uh, the best borough in New York City. And that certainly is Queens. Thank you so much, Borough President. Um, love to open it up to any questions that our participants might have. And thanks again to everyone for joining. And if anybody has any questions, you can just unmute, un unmute yourself and, and ask away. It's a quiet bunch, Brett. I, I guess we did a good job advocating. <laughs> I think these are secret uh, Queens advocates here as well. Sorry, was it Sophie? Yeah, hi. Uh, hi, I'm Sophie Krzyzewski from the Queens Chronicle. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, you spoke very briefly about um, repairs to the subways, and I was wondering if you could be more specific about what kinds of things uh, this money would be used for in the subway repairs. Um, so we're still working with the governor's office, Senator Schumer and the MTA to see exactly where this money will go. 
Um, we know, for example, Senator Schumer uh, announced a, a few days or a few weeks ago uh, with the MTA about how the system uh, signal system will be improved. So that's something that we support because that will hopefully mean decreasing uh, by a lot some of the delays that our constituents are facing. Um, I, I wanna say that specifically for Queens and for many parts in my district, most of my subway stations don't have any elevator or ramp access. And this affects people if you're in a walker, in a wheelchair, uh, a parent with young children, you physically cannot get into the subway station. So many of our constituents have to hop on a bus uh, or a subway and then go back uh, to a, a different stop farther than their home to get to an accessible subway station. Uh, uh, on the same, in the same vein, for our Long Island Railroad, there are many parts of Queens that are only accessible by a bus or a Long Island Railroad station. They have no subway access. So in the same vein, we want to make sure that we're improving uh, access and making it more affordable for people to use the Long Island Railroad, especially if that's their only option. Um, in my short time, and I want to give a lot of uh, praise to our former borough president, Claire Shulman, we've been able to work with the LIRR to get elevator or ramp access in Flushing and in Main Street, for example. But we want them at all of our stations. Um, and something that I'm, I'm pushing for um, is to reopen the Elmhurst uh, stop at the Long Island, on the Long Island Railroad on the Port Washington line. Uh, Elmhurst has grown tremendously, and we think that would help ease congestion as well. Yeah, and I'll add, uh, you hit it right on the, the head. Um, so signal repairs obviously are, are critical. Handicap accessibility, I mean, you know, we we work with the city to pass a new zoning regulation um, through, through the borough board uh, to ensure that, you know, more transportation infrastructure investment is going into ensuring, as Grace alluded to, ensuring that our stations are, are handicap accessible. And the last thing that I'll touch on is definitely the freedom ticket. Um, and the, you know, we have something called the Atlantic ticket here in Southeast Queens, but we need to see this particular program expanded throughout Queens, um, especially since um, you know, Queens residents have a lot of these trains coming through our backyard. And I know that the LIRR is built to move Long Island residents through it as well, but New York City residents need to, to benefit from this as well. And even as the MTA talks about, and I know uh, I read a report and we've been in touch with them, they're going to be releasing their updated bus network plan. You know, we want to ensure that that investment is going into more connectivity to ensuring that our buses can move more investments in select bus service, um, bus rapid transit, of course, with um, community input being centered <laughs> in these conversations as well. Um, but we want to see a lot more of that investment uh, uh, coming through as well. Thank you both. Any other questions? Uh, hi, everyone. <clears throat> hi. Hello, this is Starry from Sinkow Daily. Hi, Starry. Hi, good morning. Uh, I have a question. Uh, do you know how much money approximately uh, does a uh, Queens can get from the bill? Um, it, it depends and that's what we're hoping for. We are hoping to get as much as possible. It's not determined yet, um, but New York will get billions of dollars um, and we are hoping much of it will trickle down to New York City uh, and to Queens. And so that's why we're doing this press conference to make sure that Queens gets the money that we deserve. Queens gets the money. <laughs> I see, thank you so much. And it's gonna take advocacy. And one of the things I also wanna add um, in which I'm very grateful to our congressional delegation, you know, very early on in my term, we held a, a round table discussion with the delegation to talk about priorities, healthcare being a, a big one as we, as we especially um, as we see these numbers creeping up again. But one of the things, you know, we're gonna be centered on, and this is uh, why um, the Build Back Better bill is so important and, you know, it's shameful what's happening um, in the Senate with Manchin right now, who's holding holding our borough hostage. But, you know, this is real investment, even as we talk about 
gray and green infrastructure, you know, investment into our human capital, right? These things are just as important. Our NYCHA residents have li been living in squalor and, and living um, in conditions that are not worthy of them for a very long time. So even as we talk about this infrastructure bill, ensuring that the Build Back Better bill, uh, even as we fight, mansion fight to ensure that this, this bill is not dead, is it, gonna be critical and, and central to moving Queens forward as well. Um, but I, I think Grace hit it right, right where we, we set it right where we where we need to be. And that that is certainly ensuring that as close to that 1.2 trillion we can get, uh, we're gonna fight for it. But if we don't raise our voices as a borough, you know, and, and I'm very happy to be here with our, our, our Congresswoman, but we're working with the entire delegation as well to make sure that every pocket of the borough is seeing um, investment where it's sorely needed as well. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions, but you know, I just wanted to add, um, Borough President mentioned Build Back Better Act. Um, just to be clear, the Build Back Better Act is a part of President Biden's infrastructure plan for our country. Um, we obviously passed the uh, infrastructure framework uh, which is why we're uh, having this press conference today, but we are also uh, pleading and hoping that the Senate will be able to pass the Build Back Better Act. Um, this will help so many people in our community uh, as well, um, from children to the disabled, to people who want to uh, seek higher education, um, to climate investments. Um, and so that's something that we are still very much hoping and expecting the Senate to pass. And yes, we uh, hold Senator Manchin responsible, but we also hold the Republicans who are not thinking about so many of the children uh, and the families that will be uh, affected uh, in this borough uh, and throughout the country. Is that it? Any other questions? Oh, you know where to find us if you have any questions us. later. <laughs> All right, Jordan, I think we're good to go, but thank you everyone. Thank you to both of our teams for putting this together as well. Uh, see you all around. Uh, happy holidays if we happy. don't talk to you and please stay safe and healthy everyone. Happy and we'll holidays. be sending, so we'll be sending our press release around uh, this afternoon as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Bro President. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Stay safe. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Take care.